If there were a contest to decide the cutest baby bird in the world, frogmouths would win. Don't you think they'd win? They have such expressive faces, sometimes looking bored, angry, or happy, and their mouths are enormous, kind of like frogmouths, which is how they got their name. Frogmouths live in Australia and Southeast Asia. There are about 16 species, and all of them are nocturnal. They might remind you a little bit of owls because of their large eyes, but they're not closely related to owls. Owls have strong legs and feet. They use powerful talons to catch their prey. Frogmouths have a similar shaped foot with three toes in the front and one in back, but their feet are small and they don't have any sharp talons. In fact, the family name for this group of birds, Podargidae, it comes from the Greek word podagra, which means gout or lazy foot. Frogmouths don't catch food with their feet like owls. They catch food with their large mouths. And it turns out they're actually more closely related to nightjars, swifts, and hummingbirds than they are to owls. Since frogmouths are nocturnal, they tend to spend most of the day resting or sleeping. They have excellent camouflage to help them avoid predators. They'll often stretch out their necks and close their eyes, making themselves look like they're part of a branch. The tawny frogmouth is the most common frogmouth in Australia, and it can be found everywhere on the continent except for the very dry desert or dense rainforests. They have a very large head and can measure from about 34 to 53 centimeters long, which is about the same size as a crow, maybe just a little bigger. The majority of their diet comes from insects, worms, slugs, and other invertebrates, so they are primarily insectivores. They're considered great for pest control, and they're not picky eaters. Scorpions, snails, moths, they'll eat just about anything they can catch, and sometimes this includes mice and small reptiles or amphibians, too. Each spring, frogmouths lay two or three eggs. They're not especially good nest builders. Remember, they have small feet, which means they can't carry sticks very well, so they tend to build nests by dropping mouthfuls of twigs and leaves onto a flat or forked branch in a tree. These nests tend to fall apart easily, so sometimes they'll use nests that other birds have built, or even make use of a picnic basket or another human-made object. Tawny frogmouths are monogamous, forming partnerships for life, and they don't migrate. A breeding pair will stay together in the same area for up to about 10 years. They work together to incubate their eggs and feed their young, and a tawny frogmouth family is fairly social. They'll often be observed sitting together, helping each other with grooming, and hanging out as a group. Frogmouths can make lots of different sounds, but the primary bird call of the tawny frogmouth sounds like someone playing the same two notes over and over again. Do 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 do. Take a listen. <laughs> If you're ever in Australia, be sure to keep a lookout for this master of disguise. You might hear the call of the tawny frogmouth at dusk, but remember they're incredibly well camouflaged and during the day they don't move around too much, but if you're patient and lucky, you might see one. A big thank you to the Macaulay Library at the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, which is where I found these great photos and video clips. They have an amazing website for learning more about birds, and if you get the eBird app, you can be a citizen scientist and record your own birding observations. Don't forget there's a free worksheet that goes along with this video. You can find the link to download it right below. If you want to fill out the worksheet first without me sharing the answers, pause the video now or rewind and rewatch. But if you'd like to walk through it with me, that's what I'm going to do right now. First, fact or fiction. We have three statements here. Two of them are true and one of them is not. Can you spot the imposter? Can you figure out which of these is false? Number one, tawny frogmouth's favorite food are insects. This is a fact. The tawny frogmouth will eat just about anything, but insects and invertebrates make up most of its diet. Number two, tawny frogmouths are closely related to owls. False! Since this one is false, be sure to write in a correction. Tawny frogmouths are more closely related to swifts and nightjars. Number three, Tawny frogmouths are found in Australia. This one is a fact. Actually, the only place in the world you can see this bird is in Australia. You won't find it anywhere else. Next, we have key characteristics. 
For diet, I'm marking insectivore, that's the main one, but carnivore also because they will eat other animals besides invertebrates. For nesting, I'm marking nest and adding sloppy because their nests do tend to fall apart. For feet, they have three toes in front and one in back, anisodactyl. For beak, I'm marking something else. Their beak truly is one of a kind. There's not another bird around with a beak as short and wide and a gape as large as a frog mouth. And for size, I'm marking crow. Tawny frog mouths are bigger than a robin, but a smaller than a red-tailed hawk. They're about the same size as a crow. For eggs, just leave them white. Their eggs look similar to white chicken eggs, and they don't really have any markings. Thanks for joining us today to learn more about frog mouths. On Patreon, our Patreon community, we have a bonus class where we take you step by step through how to draw a pair of tawny frog mouths. Right now we're doing these ornithology art lessons every week. We hope you'll check it out at patreon.com slash sciencemom. And let me know in the comments what bird you'd like to see us cover next.